bow tie, make sure that martini's in a to-go cup. We're blasting off with Moonraker, baby. Starring Roger 007 Moore, Michael Ronan Lonsdale, Richard Happy Gilmore Keel, and Lois Creepshow Kylo. Moonraker is just James Bond in space. So what's this movie about? Let's open up the airlock to find out. After an American space shuttle is hijacked, James Bond teams up with CIA agent Dr. Holly Goodhead to investigate the matter. This leads them to supervillain Hugo Drax, who is kind of a symbolic equivalent to today's Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Drax leads his cult of followers to outer space with plans of planetary genocide. It's up to Bond, his babes, and a new unlikely ally to save the day. James Bond movies have always held a special place in my heart. I spent a lot of my childhood and beyond watching 007 films with my father. You might say it was father-son bonding time. James bonding time. We also used to play a shit ton of GoldenEye 64 together. Well, until Columbine happened. The news and media used Columbine to promote anti-violent video game propaganda. And it worked. On my father, at least. I was then banned from playing GoldenEye our beloved game that brought us so close together. Apparently, he thought exposing me to polygon-based, low-resolution, simulated violence would turn me into a future school shooter. Well, if you're watching this today, you know that's clearly not the case. Although I did survive a school shooting at Henry Ford Community College. Anyways, I think we were talking about James Bond. Moonraker is not the best Bond film but it's certainly not the worst, although some critics might argue otherwise. This movie's fun, silly, and still badass. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and neither should you. Just shut up and enjoy it for what it is. Unfortunately, two-thirds of what it is is just an underwhelming copycat of The Spy Who Loved Me. Thankfully, that final third of the film is a space spectacle of its time. The actual gadgets are kind of lackluster. We have your typical Bond watch, which acts as a Swiss army knife of death. There's a few other pseudo-cool doodads, but the star of the show is the laser guns, which would later resurface for a cameo in GoldenEye 64. Bond movies are always known for their sick-ass rides, like cars that turn into submarines. So when you take a gondola and just turn into a faster boat? I don't know. Shit's kind of weak. Richard Keel returns once again as our favorite metal mouth henchman, but this time he has a change of heart and helps Bond in the end. He also has a love interest in the form of a blonde brace face cutie named Dolly. It's amazing what a little bit of love can do. This change of character was influenced by fans writing in letters to the production studio saying, why can't Jaws be a good guy? Moonraker might be the ugly duck of the Bond series, but it's absurdity, Charm and final act make it all worth the watch. Otherwise, Moonraker's just another James Bond film. It follows our typical template of gadgets, misogyny, action scenes, but this one has lasers. Shit tons of lasers. And trivia, baby. Moonraker cost $30 million to produce, which is more than the first eight James Bond movies combined. All of the launch base scenes were shot at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Moonraker's production was almost shut down because Roger Moore was suffering from kidney stones. Yikes. Frank Sinatra was offered the role as Drax as well as doing the theme song. However, he declined. This is one of the only Bond films that he doesn't actually get behind the wheel of a motor vehicle. Well, he uses a utility cart, but never a car. He also only fires a traditional firearm once. 50 different sets were built for this movie, and the estimated construction time is over 220,000 hours. The metal cable that Jaws bites through was just black licorice. And speaking of Jaws, Richard Kill is the only Bond henchman to make it to two different movies. This is the only Bond film not to include the iconic Bond pistol. Moonraker was shot on three continents through four studios in seven countries. We always knew Bond could get around, but damn! Thanks for tuning in to Airlock Shock. If you've enjoyed today's content, be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment in our airlock. 
Tune in to our sister series, Tape Tomb, featuring Larry Downs. He's constantly adding new tapes to the tomb. I'm Nick Haskin of Nightmare Fuel Streaming, and until next time, stay shaken, not stirred.